Hey everybody, Greg Cazillo from Cazillo.com. Let's talk about flower and macro photography. There's a lot of parts and pieces that, if you can get them right, can create some really amazing images. Now, the first one of those, in my opinion, is timing. Now, there's two kind of components to timing. The first is which is time of day. I like to shoot late in the day, and hopefully you could pick that up because of the long shadows in this video. Time of day, I think, is everything. Getting that light angle real nice and low, get the sun angle low, uh, the sun starts to get warmer and the temperature of the light starts to get warmer, and I think it creates a much better photo in that time of day. So um, go out, photograph later in the day. That's my, always been my uh, preferred time, whether I'm shooting a portrait, whether I'm shooting wedding photos, whether I'm shooting macro or flowers, uh, whatever it is, I, almost all the time, it's better to shoot later in the day than when the sun is right above coming straight down, which is typically pretty boring, at least in my opinion. The second part of flower photography, at least, is timing of the actual flower and, and uh, blooming of the flower. Now, as you can see from these magnolias, hopefully they're magnolias, um, they're, they're kind of boring and they're dying they're they're wilting and so we have sad flowers we don't necessarily want to photograph sad flowers because <laughs> typically you want to see them nice and bright and open and um you know be be pretty whereas these are just i don't know they're just starting to look sad because they're wilting because and there goes another petal falling so um timing and the right time of the year i have one really great photo which i'll put up of a magnolia it's gorgeous absolutely gorgeous it's perfectly open, it's the right time, great color, uh, super shallow depth of field, it has everything, but it's all about that timing. I think when I had photographed that flower, it was say a week later, when I went back to the same location, it was completely gone, all the petals had fallen off, and so I shot it right at the right time. So timing, especially with flowers, at least some flowers anyway, some of them bloom forever and it's not really an issue. But for others like these, if right now it's early spring in southeastern Pennsylvania, it, uh, you know, there's only certain ones that are green or flowering or are showing any color. So you need to pay attention to that. The next thing you want to think about with your macro or flower photography is lens selection. Now this is one of my favorite macro lenses. It is a 60 millimeter 2.8 AF micro Nikkor. It's a pretty inexpensive lens selling for around $250 to $300, maybe $350 if you get one that's in really good condition with a box. But something about it, it is super, super tack sharp. It goes all the way down to one to one, which means you can get really close and fill the frame. And it is just an awesome lens. So uh, there are other ones out there, like the older 105 millimeter micro from Nikon. Also, there's a newer 105 VR from Nikon. Um, but there's a ton of really good macro lenses out there for all cameras. But obviously, since I shoot a Nikon, those are the ones that I know about. So do some research and buy the right one for you. Now, not only with, do we need to think about lens selection, we also need to think about our aperture. Now, with our aperture, the closer you get, the shallower and shallower your depth of field gets. That's a good thing because that means that my background is going to be really, really blown out like this. Hold on, we need to focus. I forgot to focus. Okay, it's really blown out in that shot. Let's make sure I'm not underexposed. Try that again. Okay, that's better. So the background is really, really blown out. And obviously that's a problem, or actually it could be a good thing, it could be a bad thing. If it's a, if it's a good thing, you don't wanna see that building, the, the yard, the, all the stuff in the background, but we might want more than one of the petals in focus. So you need to think about that. You might not wanna shoot at 2.8 and wide open. You might need to go to F8 or F11 in order to get the entire flower in focus. So it really depends on what you wanna create, how you wanna create it, but pay attention to your aperture in that situation.
So the next thing you need to think about is your angle. Now, as you can see, I'm down low shooting into this flower, and that's going to make a big difference. If I'm just shooting from above, looking, you know, weird angles, it might not look right. It might not be what I want to create. So think about that. If you want to be down low, as you see, I brought a blanket with me. Lay on the blanket, get a nice low angle, wait for the sun to go down. And right now, it's looking really, really nice. So we get that cool angle. Here's a photo that I just shot. Uh, it's a little hot, but you know what? I don't care. I think I like it that way. Um, we talked about the aperture, and I actually had to go to F8 to get a little bit more depth of field. And so, you know, that'll, that'll give me that little bit of extra. I also didn't focus right on the center. I forget what that thing is called in the middle. Uh, I actually focused on the outside of the petals, and I'll, again, show you that in one of the photos. Now, there was something else that I was just thinking... Oh, that's what it was. Focus. As you're going to notice in this shot, I don't know if you're going to be able to hear this or not. Hopefully you will. I'm actually on a continuous focus. That's what I prefer to shoot in a flower photography, macro photography, when I'm hand holding. Why is that? Because I'm moving. All right. I'm moving. I'm not going to be able to hold that camera perfectly still. And so as long as I can get that focus to lock on, I prefer to be on a continuous focus and then I know that that point, where, whichever point that I choose, is going to be sharp, is going to be the right position and, you know, it's going to be in focus whether I'm close, whether I'm farther away, and then I don't have to worry about focus as much. I can just recompose the shot, move in and out, and I'm done. The last thing you can't forget when you're doing your macro or flower photography is your normal rules of composition, uh, making sure that your background is blurry. Just like I have here, I want it to be a little blurry. I don't want you to be able to see the wandering animals that are in the background and to uh, basically get them out of the shot and make your, bring your focus back up here to me. Um, rule thirds, foreground, middle ground, background. Your, um, you know, all the typical rules of composition. You need to know them, be able to apply them, and then know when to break them or do the opposite in order to create some awesome images. So, you know, get out there, do some shooting. Uh, I'd love to see the results. Tweet them to me or paste, post them on the Facebook page. That'll be the two best places, and I'll, I'll gladly retweet them if I think there's some awesome images. So questions, comments, concerns, did I miss anything? Um, what'd you think of the video in general? I'd love to hear it. Greg Cazillo, cazillo.com. Thanks, guys. Keep shooting. See ya.